September 5th, 2023. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the 2000 tick chart on the NinjaTrader 8 platform. Go look at the descriptions below. You can see where I thought I saw setups. I didn't really actually see that many setups today, so I didn't really take a single trade. You can see this is the pre-market highs and the pre-market lows. Overall trading was range-like, and it was only about a 20-point range. Uh, even though it looks like there was a lot of swings here, there wasn't very many setups that I could identify as being high probability. Now, I do want to show, like, if you think these, this looks like it's a lot of good movement, right? I couldn't quite make it work for me because if I just draw this, this is what a two-point box looks like. So to get two-point scalp, this is how much you, your entry and how much, like, if you entered at the top of this box and you want to exit at this, uh, at the bottom, or if you enter from the bottom and you want to exit at the top going long, this is how much movement you needed. On top of that, price action was very slow today. There weren't very many candles printing. On top of that, they were taking a good while to close, like more than a couple of minutes oftentimes. So it just felt a little risky. Out of everything I saw, I only saw like five setups. And out of the five, I could only identify one as being a really good trade. And I unfortunately didn't take that one. And then there was just one more that I thought was kind of a possible trade, which was kind of this one back here, but it ended up being a hidden second entry long. And I'm a little more hesitant on hidden second entry longs because it requires a little more skill, a little more interpretation. So I often have to step back and be sure that I am reading the chart correctly. So as I said, uh, it's only a 20 point range. And even within the range itself, it was hard to find where it was consistently hitting the tops and the bottoms because I drew through these resistance lines because they only like confirmed twice. And you can say, well, if you're in the trading range, just buy at the bottom, but it's hard to really know where the bottom is because like, is this the bottom? Is, it never came back. Is this the bottom? Is this the bottom? You could argue maybe there's some kind of support here, but it was, broke through. It didn't really consistently respect it as a strong resistance. I mean, it, this looked like a bottom at one point. This is the bottom. This looked like a resistance as a, at the top side. So it was kind of difficult for me to justify any good trades. So I'm going to go through the five setups I saw, and hopefully it goes rather quickly. Also, there was no real economic data to move the markets today. It's coming right off of Labor Day, which is, this was Labor Day. There was technically futures trading yesterday, but it was a shortened day. So this is definitely not anything worth trading. It's just, uh, for me, definitely, it's just a day you should just skip, because why sit through this for a few hours? It yield nothing. And plus, the candles here took a very long time to close. So in the pre-market, I drew the highs and the lows. And at, at this point in the pre-market, which is this gray region, it looks like it's just going to be a slow, probably trading range. As soon as the market opens, I don't see any good setup. It looks very choppy. And the first setup I saw, which was actually probably the only good setup worth taking today, was right here. It creates a new low. And at this point, I did suspect there's some kind of resistance here, a downward trend line, because it confirmed nicely here. Now, I wasn't 100% sure where it was, so you could be playing potentially a trend line that looks like this, a little more shallow, a little more aggressive. But when it hit this green bar and I saw a new low here, the first entry short pulls up. This actually creates a second entry short. So this is what you see in real time. It clicks over and it actually matches the bottom of this previous green bar. So this becomes a new signal bar and it closed below the EMA, which is great. It's rejecting off of this confirm resistance now. Now, I also drew, as soon as I saw this green one kind of finish, actually, I was trying to have it touch this first green bar, and I had this bottom trend line going here. I thought I was in a channel, and when this one kind of helped confirm it, and it looked like it was getting rejected and coming back down, I thought this might have been a good trade, and it's confirming the downward move. Unfortunately, I didn't take it. And then when this one closed, then it definitely was too late. So I, I missed this trade. And I was hoping that potentially there was going to be a, a higher, a lower high to come back and help me, but it never came back. So this is a trade that, you know, was a potential, but I unfortunately didn't jump on it or capitalize on it. And trading kind of cops sideways. Originally it had the trading range tighter, looking like this. And it kind of breaks out. It broke out overshoot here and then it confirmed another overshoot out here, kind of symmetric. Don't see a good setup. It chops through. It's kind of rejecting or disregarding the fact that you're in a range now because it's just kind of whipping and it's getting larger too. So it's flying up and it finally flies out. So then 
it's chopping. I don't see any good setups. Also, price action isn't as clean as I'd like. I mean, look at the bodies, and then you get these big wicks at the tops, at the bottoms. Continues trading. This is where I actually see a second entry short that fails. So here you have a new low. You have a first such a short, pulls up, comes back down. It's kind of bouncing off the top of this range, but even at this point, I wasn't sure that this range is valid or is being respected anymore because you could technically think that maybe this is the top of the range or even up here. So I was here at one time and I was thinking, is this really the top of the range? Is this a second entry short confirmed? This is a good this is a terrible signal bar, but there's a strong push down, except the EMA is holding. So I'm thinking maybe there's a failed second entry short. It flashes down. It's still confirming your second entry short. So now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should be going short. But then again, I'm wondering about the bottom of this range. So when this bar closes, so it actually flashes up. And at the last few moments of this life of this candle, it closes above. So I realize, okay, there's a first entry short, second entry short. This trapped a lot of people that are still holding short. And at this point, I thought, okay, maybe there's a channel here. So this is where this green channel comes into play. And this one actually engulfs and is so strong, it kind of closes out any potential people that are short. Probably, you know, they're sitting here at one tick above. But for here, definitely felt like the trade was already too late to try to enter, to try to enter one tick above. It felt too late because, again, as I said, I wasn't sure if maybe I'm at the top of this range. And it looked like it would have worked. But again, in real time, it's hard for me to really know for sure. And prices continue moving up. It kind of seems like it's respecting this as a potential resistance. So I drew this and it looked like it flashes right through. So it didn't really mean anything at that point. I saw a potential one leg up, pull back, and I'm thinking where this orange line just representing a second leg up. And I'm thinking I'm going to see potentially a move all the way back up to here or potentially get stuck right at the top of this pre market range. If I'm watching this carefully. Moves up, it almost makes a measured move, and it for here it might be close enough, but for sure it looks like it's being rejected off the top of the pre market high and it's starting to come back down. Unfortunately, there's no setup, it kind of chops around, it's trying to push up again. Price a second time, you could argue that it might be a triple test here, but I just don't like the setup because this could be seen as the area of congestion, it looks something like roughly here, and so I just left it alone. Then it starts moving back down, so. Certainly, if you were aggressive, you might have taken it, but it's hard to argue that this is like a failed second entry long because you're potentially running into the bottom of the where the EMA is and potentially at the bottom of this trading range. So taking a failed second entry long just felt very dicey. Also, you can see prices are struggling to move up. So to take a second entry long here, good signal bar. And if you waited for this one to close, now it's very, it seems also risky to try to take a long. The prices continue moving down. It falls into this channel. Unfortunately, there's no good entries. And just the watch this kind of move without you. But even then, at this point in the day, I'm pretty sure this is just trading range. But I wasn't sure if the bottom where the pre-market low was, was the bottom of the range, or potentially here, or even here. So I just have to keep waiting for price action to unfold. It drops around. It gets choppy. I don't like what I see. So I'm just sitting on my hands trying to be patient. Thumbs up. And at this point, I thought maybe there's a trend channel resistance right here, but I drew this first. It looks like it's respecting it. I see something here. I see a new low here. It's a first entry short, and I also see a new high here, first entry long, second entry long. So I'm wondering if it's going to push through this trend line resistance up and through, or is it going to come right back down? So I was in my mind, it's not marked yet. I saw first entry short, potentially second entry short, and if it strongly pushes below the EMA, there might be a trade or first entry long, second entry long. And if it pushes strongly up, then I'll know it's a failed second entry short. Well, to have a failed second entry short, it has to actually break one tick below and move back up. And a failed second entry long potential is if it broke below this candle. So it confirms it's a failed second entry long. So I saw first entry long, second entry long failure, and also confirm the second entry short now. So first entry short, second entry short. However, for the second entry short, it's not a good signal bar. And so when you waited for this to close, and it confirmed the failed second entry long. There doesn't seem to be enough room here to push down to this potential, because I saw another potential range. I didn't feel there was enough room to confidently push all the way down to here and through. So I had to keep waiting. It looks like if you took the trade one tick below, you'd get filled, you'd be waiting because your stock would probably be one tick above here. 
And then here, it looks like you would have gotten the scout. But even then, after this, you know, this confirming the setup of the second entry short and the failed second entry long, this isn't very convincing because you waited for this to close. But you don't know that, you know, you might get stopped out here, or have a bounce. Then you see this candle close and it's like, okay, well, now the maturity of the trade is, is getting late now. It's like if you didn't take it aggressively up here or here, now you have this. Is, it looks like it might potentially reverse because it could be interpreted as a bounce off the bottom of this range. So definitely it's like, okay, well, whatever setup was here, the trade has already moved. It's too late. The price to continue moving down. Uh, you could argue this was a you know, lower high. But then again, if it pressed below this candle, then you'll be for sure there's momentum helping to carry you down. But it's kind of like bouncing off this potential bottom of range. So even this lower high, which I'll just mark here, which I saw, but it's just like, it's a little confusing. It just like uh, felt unsafe, risky. So then I had to, of course, let it go. Prices continue moving down. Looks like it would have worked out great, except uh, just my experience. I haven't seen them enough to trust my read. I had to let it go. Then prices continue moving. It falls in this ugly choppy area. I see a hidden second entry long here. So new high, the first entry long, pulls back. This candle actually creates a second entry long that was hidden. So it's a new high, first entry long. On this green candle, you actually see a break one tick below and then goes all the way back up. So when it broke above this guy, I thought, okay, there's potentially a second entry long that's hidden, but I wanted to see what would happen. And unfortunately, this candle closed so bullish up here. If it closed a little bit lower, there might have been a trade, but then I would run into the concern that there might be some kind of resistance up here. But since it closed so high up, it felt like the trade already ran away without you. So I just had to let it go. But I also saw this as a potential short and trend channel up. It's the first break. Now it wants to test this high, right? So when it already tested the high and exceeded it, then it feels like, okay, the trade has been made. It's too late. Definitely just got to let it go. Because you guys see it's a first break, first push up, pull back, a second attempt up. But unless you took out any engulfing, the trade is just left without you. The prices continue moving up. Here, I, this uh, Horton, excuse me, this trend line down. It confirmed once, confirmed twice. Here, when it broke out, I was wondering if there's going to be a fail breakout and a move back in to touch the other side. And then I did draw or feel more confident that this could be the bottom of the channel. So I'm sitting here waiting and I watch, and it looks like it's coming back through. I see another second entry long that was hidden. Now, in a shorter time frame, it would have been more clean. So it's like a new high here, first entry long. And then, uh, same thing on the life of this candle, which is the same thing as the life of this candle. It looked like it broke one tick below and then it flashed up. Now, this is a potential trade that I kind of passed up because it bounced off the EMA. EMA is kind of showing support. It's coming back through. It looks like it's breaking through this channel coming down. It closed very bullish. Unfortunately, if it had just closed one more tick above, it looked like it would have pushed through, but it, it looked like there was some kind of micro resistance right here that gave me pause. I wasn't sure. And then if I did want to take it, I'd say I take it one, uh, one tick above here. There, doesn't, there isn't enough room to scalp out confidently. You do have six ticks potentially to just quickly scalp out here, but you're running into a potential micro double top here. This, this just gave me a little bit of reason to not really like the trade. And to be honest, I had been sitting here watching all day, but I'm just seeing how much price action there was in that amount of time. I was a little bit just weary, feeling like maybe I should just let the day go and be a no trade day, and that would have been okay. And, and as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. Prices look, uh, prices then moved up, so this trade would have worked out. But again, I'm okay with just passing it up because I just wasn't sure. Kind of moves back down. I'm thinking there might be a potential resistance here. So at first I was playing with the idea that it might be resistance here. Then when it fell short, then I kind of dragged it back down. And I was thinking maybe it'll come back up. If it comes back up before the market closes, maybe there'll be a short here, depending on the setup. But as you can see, the late day is getting pretty late. It flashes down. It creates this choppiness, which I just don't like. It looks like there's some kind of support down here. I mean, there was some kind of respect being paid here. There was an overshoot here, but it just wasn't clean. I just keep waiting. It breaks up through strongly. Then it flashes right back down. And this is just like this weird, 
this weird probably end of day market reaction. And of course, in the last 10 minutes, you know, you get a lot of price action that's moving, but not as much as usual. And it's just kind of slowing down. So definitely by then I was just watching, wasn't planning on taking any trades, just out of my hands, decided to, you know, claim as a no trade day. So this is what price action looked like today. There wasn't very many setups. It wasn't particularly tricky, but it was just kind of a slow, pretty slow, boring day. I think it's just because it's coming off a three-day holiday. There was no real economic data coming up. And so, yeah, it was just, I didn't really see any, many, very many or many setups at all. So hopefully that was helpful.